Hey everyone, in this video we're going to review the grid system in Bootstrap 5. So with the grid system we can do layouts. So what are layouts? Well, layout can be very simple. It can be in the navbar we want to have this thing on the left side and these links on the right side. That's a layout. Um, here in this overview section we have these three elements on the same line and there should be some space between them. That's also a layout. Now whenever you run into um, those layout challenges and you're going to run into many of them on one page, could be dozens of them on one page, you have a couple of options you can use for example flexbox in css you can use css grid which is also uh, a vanilla css concept now in bootstrap in this framework or library whatever you want to call it you also have something called the grid system and it allows you to do those layouts as well now the great part about that grid system is that it's very easy to make it responsive as well for example here in this model i have this form i have an input on one side and this select element on the other side and this looks great this is something we can do with the grid system but what's really cool is that we can very easily change this depending on the on the viewport width right so on smaller devices on mobile phones i want this stacked layout but on wider devices i want that horizontal layout right so this grid system is one of the powers of bootstrap and it's one of the reasons why so many people use it now i do want to make clear that the grid system in bootstrap is not the same as flexbox or css grid in vanilla css right so it's still very important that you master the underlying fundamentals which in this case is css right so i think especially flexbox you really need to learn flexbox if you want to work with the front end i have a whole course on css i highly recommend you check it out if you want to do anything with the front end because it will it will really take your css to an advanced level and after that it's super easy to pick up an abstraction on, on top of css like something like bootstrap or tailwind all of these abstractions are very easy to learn once you've mastered the underlying fundamentals Okay, so to understand the grid system in Bootstrap, I will quickly show you how it works. So I have opened up a project here and I have opened it up here in the browser and it's also displaying how wide the viewport is at this moment, right? You'll see why this is important. So let's say I have some paragraph elements, hello. I can use some Bootstrap styles to quickly give it um, some styling, right? I'll just give it a border and some background color. And this is what we have right now. Now in the default case, it's gonna sit right against the edge of the viewport, right? Because it's a block level element, so it's gonna take up the entire width, right? So what you have in Bootstrap is a container class. So you can say container, and that will constrain the width of whatever you put in there, right? So now it's not sitting against the edge anymore. This is particularly helpful if you have like a nav bar or a header. You don't wanna have that stuff so sit right against the edge of the viewport, especially as it gets smaller and smaller. Right, So you can use the container class and I'm showing you that because it's also often used in their examples on their website in conjunction with the grid system. Right, So this is all you know, outside the grid system. We have not done anything with the grid yet. Okay, now let's say that we don't have one paragraph element, but we have two, right? So now we have two, but we want them to sit next to each other. So now we can use the grid system. So the grid system always starts like this. You have a row and you, you typically create a new element for this. So you say dot row, you get a div, right? And then once you've created the row, you get 12 units to allocate. So for example, I can say the first uh, column, right? So those units are going to be allocated to columns. Those are the vertical parts. So I want to give the first column six out of those 12 units and the other column, well, we have six left. Let's also give that one six, right? So then we can put these paragraphs in there. They will automatically take up that width of the, of the column, right? So whatever you put in here then would take up that width, right? So you also typically create a new div for these columns. So now when you do that, we have two columns and they are equally big because they take up an equal amount of those units, right? We can also say this one should get four, this one should get eight. Right, so this one should now be smaller than this one because it's getting fewer units in that row. Right, so now this one is indeed smaller than this one. Now by default they have a gap as well. Right, so they get some gap as a default. You can change this. So you can go to the row and you can say gap on the horizontal axis. So that's X. And then you can pick between 0 and 4. Right, so I actually get suggestions here by the way. If you want those suggestions, you have to go to the extensions. You have to install this extension. It will give you those suggestions for Bootstrap, right? So here I can pick one of the suggestions. Let's make it four. And I'm not sure if that changed anything. Maybe that was already the default. Let's see. 
Yeah, so you can see, um, you can fine tune the gap like this, right? I will just remove it and use the default one for now. That was actually the default one. Okay, so we have 12 units in total, right? So this is taking up four, this is taking up eight. What if we have another one? that right so we have, we've already given these two the, the full 12 so what if we give another one let's say three what will happen in that case well it will actually just wrap onto a new line here right there is also some default space vertically you can use the one of the gap uh, classes again but now it's gy for the vertical direction so we can say gy5 and it will increase that vertical space okay so let me remove this third one again there are some other tricks so this one is not taking up four this one's taking up eight so what we can also do is um let's say we we tell this one to take up let's say two and we're just gonna say call here. Let's see what happens when we do that. So now this one will take two units, right? So it's gonna be very small. And this one will actually just take up everything else. This is very useful in practice because sometimes we don't have a specific width or we just want it to take up everything else. So you can be specific about the other ones or other one. And for this one, we can just say call. Um, another thing that you sometimes will see is call auto. Um, with this one, it will just take up the size of its content, right? So here we just have the word uh, hello. So that's the only width that it actually needs. And so you get this. Okay, now why is this so powerful? Why is this, this grid system so famous, actually? A lot of people know about it. Um, and that is because it's very easy to make this responsive, right? So we can uh, use the breakpoints in Bootstrap to create responsive layouts pretty quickly. If we change the viewport width here right now, what will happen is that it will always be this proportion. It will always stay like this. Proportion will be the same for every viewport. The layout, the layout basically stays the same. And that's what we want sometimes. However, on smaller devices, often we want a stacked layout, which means they're gonna sit one below one after another, right, vertically. And then on wider viewports, we wanna have them like this, like a horizontal layout, right? That's a very typical uh, type of layout that you want in terms of responsiveness. So what you can do is you can use these breakpoints in Bootstrap. These are used throughout all the other features in Bootstrap as well. So quite often you need to open the docs if you're using Bootstrap so that you can look at these uh, breakpoints. They have some predefined breakpoints that, well, you can use to change the layout depending on how wide the viewport is, right? So you can say, for example, we can use MD here, for example. So what we can do is MD, so that's on uh, 768, that's the breakpoint so we only want this horizontal layout from medium and onwards and bootstrap is mobile first so it starts off stacked so now it's stacked right it's mobile first it has a mobile first philosophy so on the smallest viewport it starts off stacked that's the default layout in bootstrap and then from medium and onwards which is how wide again medium is 768 so when we cross 768, right, we will get that horizontal layout. Yeah, right. So now we get that horizontal layout again with, with this proportion, 8 and 4, right? But the default is stacked, right? So that's a bit of a, a, a thing to wrap your mind around, especially if you're not used to doing things mobile first. Um, that's simply the philosophy of Bootstrap, by the way. It does not mean you have to create your projects in a mobile-first way. I don't do that. I never do it. Some developers do it. Some developers prefer it. I prefer desktop first. But when you use Bootstrap, um, you do have to keep in mind that they have a mobile-first philosophy. So the default layout starts off stacked. And then from one certain breakpoint onwards and bigger, you can have a certain proportion, right? Could also be, uh, let's say, LG, right? So maybe not at medium, but only from LG and bigger. We wanna get, I don't know, um, maybe just both of them have to have equal size. So, so both take up six units, right? So then what's large, that's 992 pixels, right? So the default is stacked. And then from 992 pixels, we should get that horizontal layout, right? And they are equally big. Now, when they are equally big, you actually don't need to specify the number of units, right? Not just with the responsive classes, but also without them. You never have to specify them if, if they should be equally big. Right, so now from 992, 
they become um, horizontal and they're always equally big now, right? Now you can make it more advanced. So what we could say is initially, right, that's how it starts. So initially it should be, let's say, um, just stacked. So we don't have to do, any, we don't have to write anything here because that's the default. But then from, let's say, medium and onwards, it should be four. Right, this one should get four units and this one should get the remaining eight units. And then from a larger breakpoint, so maybe XL, let's see. Uh, let's actually do LG. So from LG and onwards, it should get, um, it should flip, right? So this one should get eight. And this one should get four, right? So then again, default layout is stacked. And then as soon as we cross the medium breakpoint, which is 768, we will get this proportion. Right? Now we get this proportion. And now when we cross the large breakpoint, 992, we should get a different proportion, the opposite. Right? Now this one should get 8. 992, let's see. Yeah, so now it flips, right? So you can get it, you can get it more uh, advanced like that. And uh, yeah, that's that's how it works in a nutshell. And you don't only can have one row, you can have multiple rows, right? So here we have one row. So if you want another row, well, typically you create a new element for this. So you can just say row. And then here you have another 12 units to allocate. So you can create new columns, right? So I can copy this. Um, let's just... Focus on the medium size here. Right here, for this one, I'll just, uh, oh, let's actually make it a little bit more interesting, nine and three. Right, so now we're gonna get something like this. Right, this is another row with a different allocation of those units, right? So it starts off with a row, you get 12 units, um, you use those columns, those columns can have these uh, breakpoint uh, uh, suffixes in the class name so that you can easily make the layout responsive. Okay, so typically you want to set the, the size of these columns here in the actual classes for the column div. However, you can also set them from the row level. This is sometimes what you will see. So what you do is you say call here and then to actually, uh, well, let's actually create four because it will demonstrate the idea a little bit better. And so we have four uh, child elements of this row. And now we can set from the row level how many columns there should be. So we could say row calls two. There should be two columns in this row. So when you do that, the items here will organize themselves into two columns, right? So column one, column two, and then the third one does not fit here. It will go to the new line. Right, we can also say calls three, right? Column one, column two, column three. The fourth one will simply go to column one again on a new line, right? If we have four columns, they will each take up one column. If we have one column, well, you're gonna have a stacked layout, right? Right now, this is pretty cool. This is uh, this makes it very easy to quickly create a layout, and it can also be pretty you can you can create pretty complicated layouts. So, let's say we have three columns one, two, three. Now we want the third one to take up a little bit more. So I can go to the third one and I can say, because right now right, there are still 12 units and they're equally big. So they're all taking up four, four, four. Maybe this one should take up six units. So I could say six and actually that doesn't fit. So it will actually move onto a new line, right? And um, you, we can use the responsive classes as well. So we could say initially there should be one column, right? one column and then from small the small uh, few uh, uh, breakpoint and onwards right so we can say row calls sm and from there onwards there should be two columns right so now this, when this when it crosses the small breakpoint which is 576 we get two columns right and then we could add another one for medium and so on right now we can also say row calls auto and this will make every column the size of the content, as big as the paragraph itself is, right? And we can still use the gap properties, by the way, right? So we haven't used that much here, um, but we can use GX, um, any of these numbers, right? And you can fine tune that. 
All right, now last thing I want to show you before we move on to some actual uh, practical examples that may actually undo uh, some, th some things here. Right, let's say we actually have uh, two rows. So we have two rows and here, let's say here, we, ha we, we will give the first one two units, this one as well, two units. And this one should simply be the size of its content. So you get something like this. And let's actually make this three units, three units, right? So you get something like this on the first row, the second row. Yeah, maybe a second row is something like this. Now let's just leave it like this. But now we want this stuff to be centered, right? This is something you'll run into when you have uh, rows that have a different well, total width. So we want to center this. You can go to this row. So quite often what you want to do is the following, justify content, center, and this will center the elements like this. You can also make them sit at the end if you prefer that, right? This is actually a class that um, comes from Boot from uh, Flexbox, right? So it's very helpful if you know the underlying fundamentals, which is just CSS itself. Once you master CSS, all the abstractions like Bootstrap or Tailwind, they're all very easy to learn. So I highly recommend that you check out my professional CSS course if you want to master CSS. Okay, so let's quickly look at some practical examples. So here in this project, I had a modal and in the modal, we have a form with two input fields or actually an input field and a select field. So I want them to be next to each other horizontally like this, but on smaller devices, let me actually zoom in a little bit. I want them to be stacked, right? So here in the in the form, I created a row, right? And in the row, we have two columns, right? Or two divs. Um, initially, the default layout is that they are stacked, right? So Bootstrap has a mobile first philosophy. So in the default here, they're going to be stacked. But then from uh, SM, the small breakpoint and onwards, they become bigger, right? And they will sit next to each other. They both get six units of space. This is pretty straightforward, honestly. And um, I used the gap property here to uh, determine this space here. And this is honestly, all, you know, most of what you need in practice. Most of the layouts that you want to do, you know, are pretty straightforward, simple ones like this one. So let me show you another example here um, with cards, right? So Bootstrap also has these cards out of the box as a component. So here I have three cards next to each other, right? So we have a row, I create a row, new div with a class of row. So um, in on small viewports, we want these cards to be stacked vertically, right? And then from large and onwards, they both, they all should get the same size. I didn't have to use the number here, by the way, but it was for a tutorial. So it was good to make it explicit, right? So from large and onwards, they get an equal horizontal space. Now, by the way, that's the column, right? But the element in the column, make sure that it spans the entire width of that column. Otherwise, you're not going to have that result. So with these out-of-the-box components, like a card, for example, Bootstrap does not give them a particular width, like width 50 pixels. It does. It actually gives them something like width 100%, so that whenever you put, it, put a card in a column, it will automatically take out that entire width. Also here, I used the Y gap. That's vertical, right? So that's this vertical space when they are stacked. You don't need to know much more, I think, in practice. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.